America, we stand for freedom. Though freedom is never really free, we yearn and strive for government, protecting our liberty. Good evening, Fitchburg, and welcome to Your Right to Know, presented by the Fitchburg Republican City Committee. My name is Mary Lotz, and I will be your host for this evening's show. Tonight on Your Right to Know, we will continue our panel discussion on the term Republican by continuing to explore the values and meanings behind the term Republican and the Republican Party and complete our discussion on the factions within the party, conservative, neoconservative, libertarian, Tea Party, and Federalist. Tonight on our panel, we again welcome back Stephen Hartka, our chairman of the Fitchburg Republican City Committee. To my uh, near right is Professor John Strang. Dr. Strang is a retired professor of philosophy. And to my left is Steve Morin, also a member of the Fitchburg Republican City Committee. So what I'd like to do is quickly recap the discussion that we started in our June show. The Republicans took their core values directly from the Founding Fathers in the U.S. Constitution, which defines our nation not as a democracy but as a constitutional republic. The Constitution defines three co-equal branches of government with co-equal balance between these three branches, which of course are the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. This con concept of a constitutional republic was not an accident on the part of the Founding Fathers. This was a purposeful document which is unifying and actually the U.S. Constitution defines America. The underlying ideology of republicanism is conservatism, which is derived directly from the U.S. Constitution. Our rights do not come from man or a king but directly from God. And this was and remains a monumental concept. We'll begin discussing our factions by looking at libertarians. Libertarians have a belief in the individual liberty, holds firmly to these values that support and enhance individual liberty above all other values. This may include personal responsibility, self-determination, equality under the law, and the rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness that are outlined in the Declaration of Independence. Then we go to conservatism. Conservatism was really broken into two parts. Neoconservatism emphasizes the development or influencing of international foreign policy that promotes the expansion of ideas of spreading American democracy abroad. George Bush would be a primary example uh, and many believe that it was the neocon George Bush that got us involved in Iraq and Afghanistan. Social conservatism, one who leans more towards a religious basis for decision and policy making. A social conservative would be one who supports such issues as pro-life, prayer in school, maintains the institution of marriage as that between one man and one woman. Who would be an example of a social conservative? Probably Ronald Reagan is the best guess, or the best uh, individual. We have the Tea Party. The Tea Party is not a political party, but rather a political movement that is based in full support and adherence to the U US Constitution. Tea Party patriots or activists remain nonpartisan, but because of their roots are from the Constitution, uh, oftentimes these roots are based in the Constitution, therefore typically supporters of the movement are primarily Republican or unenrolled and typically not from the Democratic Party. Examples of Tea Party politicians might be Michelle Bachman as she's head of the House of Representative 66 member Tea Party Caucus. Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz are all examples of Tea Party Republicans. Federalist. 
This is an intellectual movement with a focus on the U.S. Constitution and specifically the government at every level must not exceed what is specifically defined and outlined in the Constitution and uh, the three branches of government. John, last month we did not get the opportunity to continue our discussion or to complete our discussion. And where we really left off was the concept of libertarian. So could you now just complete that and fill in the blanks of who would be an example of a libertarian leaning Republican and why? Thank you. Uh, sure, the, the best name uh, as an example of a libertarian would clearly be Ron Paul, mm -hmm. who indeed uh, is a very prominent politician. He's retired now. But uh, he, was, he served 22 years in the House of Representatives. Um, and uh, he, for example, he's been called or nicknamed Dr. No because he says no, he said no during those 22 years. Because Dr. No is in K-N-O-W. Well, yes. actually no in this, in this <laughs> sense also. But in, in this sense, no, because he said no to tax increases, uh -huh. to budget increases. Uh, he believes that the uh, Constitution provides for a national defense a civil uh, court system and a criminal justice system, and little beyond that. Uh, he's pledged never to raise taxes. Uh, he wants to scale back and eventually end the income tax. And in foreign policy, he's very much opposed to interventions abroad. So he got into a lot of tangles with neoconservatives. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, his, uh, in terms of his actual legislation, uh, rather astonishingly, in those 22 years, he, he uh, put forward 620 uh, bills none of which, only one of which, excuse me, actually passed. So he wasn't very successful uh, in getting bills passed. Uh, the one that passed was sort of a, uh, just naming a, a federal office building as far as I'm uh, aware. But he did amend some bills that, and that had a positive effect. Uh, he amended, for example, uh, uh, the, the, intentional, the intention of having an international criminal court have jurisdiction over the United States military. He was able to get that essentially uh, blown out of the water. But that's an illustration of where he's coming from. Would you have placed Gabriel Gomez, our recent Senate candidate, as a more libertarian leaning? I mean, Gabriel Gomez supported uh, gay marriage, and he also vowed that when he went to D.C., he was not going to change Roe versus Wade. Would that be an example also of a libertarian? Perhaps. Uh, I guess I'd have to know more about uh, Gabriel's positions, but there are certain respects in which he would be uh, considered that. With all of this clarification now that we've brought us up from last month, what I'd like to do now, with all of your permission uh, and agreement, is we'll go into some of our questions and we will start discussing the practical application of what we've just learned. Um, now that we know the history of the Republican Party and the roots of the factions within the party, how do we bring these factions together? They're, they're pretty desperate disparate in, in many ways. There's, there's very clear distinctions. Um, Stephen, I'm going to ask you first. Well, I, I think that the, the, you know, when we look at all the different aspects of the Republican Party and you know, all the different beliefs that are contained therein, you know, the underlying theme is conservative. And having a, having a, a candidate that really espouses um, I'd say a, a general perception of, of all Republicans, in, in conservative in particular, you know, just being someone who is um, moderate yet very conservative in, in regard to where the Constitution says we have our rights, where we think we should be headed. Um, I think a lot of the Republican Party can can stand behind somebody that that bridges all of those different ideals. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen, what do you think? I, I, I think bringing in uh, <clears throat> the, what we've talked about as far as like uh, the neoconservatives uh, and all of those branches together <laughs> are three things, three major things. It's constitutional law, okay. it's taxes, and small government. Mm. You can align all those three groups and those uh, okay. concentrated in, within that. And if, you, if we can bring out the message of getting that out there, then all those groups can combine together and pick a candidate that will actually win and go up against these Democrats. What do you think, John? I, I go with Steve Morin. I have to guess. I say, which Steve here? That's I don't disagree there. with you, Steve, but I think uh, I, I, I tend to agree with what Steve just said there. Certainly, uh, we're all linked by our adherence to the Constitution and the elements you described there, limited government, 
uh, low taxation, and, and uh, uh, these, are, these are factors that uh, all conservatives, all Republicans pretty much can agree on. If you can't, I guess you would have to ask yourself seriously, am I a Republican? Because right. these are basic core issues for Republicans. Yeah. Let me, let me throw this out to you because we, you know, we just came off of an election, a senatorial election that uh, unfortunately from our perspective we didn't win. But one of the things that I find very disconcerting is that we had very prominent people out there on the talk radio circuit, which many conservatives and Republicans do listen to talk radio. We had Michael Graham from the large Worcester station. We have a, a man by the name of Jeff Cooner from the Boston station. And these, peop these radio hosts were advocating that Republicans or those leaning conservative stay home and not vote for Gabriel Gomez because he did not exemplify the true strict adherence to a social conservative values or principles. Now, what, what do you think about this? Um, John, let me throw that one to you first. Well, uh, if that's what they said, I, I wouldn't agree with that. Uh, we know that not all Republicans would consider themselves social conservatives. Uh, so I think that's uh, it's self-defeating to, uh, to, to adopt an attitude like that. Uh, Gabriel Gomez was not my favorite candidate. Uh, I'm more conservative than he is. Nonetheless, I would say he would be a would have been a much better uh, senator uh, than uh, than the than the individual who got elected. Uh, Stephen, what do you think? I have mixed feelings, to be honest with you. Um, I would have vo I, I voted for uh, Gabriel Gomez. Uh, it was much better than you know than Markey, mm -hmm. obviously, um, that hasn't done anything for 37 years. My personal candidate would have been uh, Mike Sullivan mm -hmm. because he he demonstrated hard core values to the conservatives. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was my guy. Um, I can understand what these radio station hosts, you know, talk about like, you know, well, we need to present a strong conservative person to go up against these Democrats because these Democrats vote straight party line. That's it, mm -hmm. nothing else. So we need to present our guy out there that will support the values, have a backbone and go out and get it done. Yeah, Gabriel was very, he was very edgy in his campaign. I mean, he, he definitely, he poked fun at himself and he kind of, um, I, I think maybe he even made light of a little bit of the situation where, you know, yeah, Ed Markey's been in, in Senate for, you know, 37 years. What has he done? I mean, has he shown up to vote? You know, has he, has he really made any impact whatsoever? And, and I think his record, Markey's record shows that he really hasn't. But that said, you know, I think Gabriel, you know, he's, he's a first time politician. He's not, um, he's not very polished, but he, he also came right out and said that, and said mm -hmm. that, you know, if you want change, if you want to bring us back to where somebody's actually voting their conscience and, and, and supporting our party in a, in a solid way, he, you know, he was the man. And mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought he did a good job with that. And I, I actually admired the fact that he stepped out of the norm and didn't run a, what we call a, a standard campaign, right, if you right, will. Right. But that said, very it unique, may have hurt him. It, it actually may have mm -hmm. hurt him because there are conservatives out there that will say, yeah, he, he kind of overstepped a little didn't bit. Didn't fit a but, mold. Yeah. I, and I think Republicans are just tied to hearing, or conservatives, whatever you want to call it, mm. are just tied to hearing, I will reach over party lines. Right. Because every single time that we reach over party lines, we get swept like you know swept out the door sure and we have to we have, we we have to stand up for what we believe in and go you know do what we need to do mm -hmm. i mean you don't see any democrats reaching over party lines and saying oh well the republicans have a great idea yeah right. you never hear that right. it's always like oh well, the republicans are going to bend they'll have some you know some play and well, and I think they're, they're just tired of hearing don't that. Don't you think really what they're doing is the Democrats are using the numbers advantage to their advantage? Yes. The, the, and, and that's going to actually bring me to my next question. Because we have this huge number of unenrolled voters. Let me just throw out these statistics for our audience. I know you all know them. In Fitchburg, 10% Republican, 33% Democrat, 56% unenrolled. Right. Massachusetts, of course, is a very blue state, but it's very similar. The numbers stay the same statewide. Out of 4.1 million voters, 11% Republican, 36% Democrat, 53% unenrolled. How do we as a party 
try to attract those unenrolled voters? Do we do it by saying we are conservatives, these are our, our, our standing points, and you like us or you don't like us, or, or what do you do? Perfect I'm example. throwing it out. <clears throat> Markey came out during the, uh, during the, um, the campaign and said he, he, he's gonna raise taxes pretty much. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if Gomez came out and said, I am not raising taxes, blah, 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 and stuck to those points, I think that he could have made a big difference, much bigger than what the numbers were showing. You know, instead of like 10%, or 10 points um, gap there, it would have been more like five. Mm -hmm. You know, people are tired of getting taxed, and I think that's a major, if, if, I think that's a major, mm -hmm. a major issue there. Mm -hmm. John, Steve? Uh, I would just make a general comment here, and that is we know we live in a state with an overwhelming liberal uh, re mm -hmm. reputation, and justifiably so. But remember Ronald Reagan saying that uh, we should seek to elect the most conservative politician we can get elected mm -hmm. uh, so that qualifies things in a, in a state like Massachusetts uh, and, and I think you can attract the unenrolled we know it happened with uh, Scott Brown of course uh, he he won and with respect to our particular area here North uh, Worcester County we also know that Gomez won this area right. uh, in fact the uh, the statewide proportion 55 to 45 percent was reversed in Gabriel Fitchburg. Gomez in Fitchburg, uh, alone. Fitchburg right. alone favor it was uh, higher in other that's some right other cities that's like right sure. you know, and that that also leads to you know voter turnout you know where you know the Democrats historically have controlled the urban population um, especially in this state you mm -hmm. know and if you looked at the last election you know all the cities were they were all blue every one of them and all of the surrounding areas are all red well mm -hmm. you know if the cities are all blue I mean that's where the population is is concentrated so you know, to your to your point, Mary. You know, getting people to come out and actually vote is is a big deal. And whether that be you know independent or Republican, I think if more independents came out, I think the Republican vote would go up. Yes. Quite frankly, um, I think a lot of independents are more conservative leaning than they are Democratic. But without getting without getting a real solid turnout, I mean, what do we have in Fitchburg? Twenty percent. 10 percent uh i think it was about 22 i 20, could be wrong 20%. i think it was about 20 so, yeah you know i mean look at the numbers so, it was it was what, low it was very yeah. you know so I mean, if you have the low. same the same degree of turnout in in the urban areas where you have a democratic bias you, you know you're you're dead in the water already and that's that's a key but key it, thing. if you also have people like the radio talk show host counseling people or advising them to yes. stay home mm. and people follow that advice because they think they're listening to someone of reason and somebody of knowledge telling them to stay home doesn't this somewhat defeat our I think John you well, said it's, it's self defeating yeah, I didn't hear right. that but that's yeah. pretty bad that's if that's, that's if it really had that much of an effect I don't know that we have the statistics right. yet I on don't that. know uh, I, I, I spoke to many conservatives, and they didn't like, you know, when Gomez first came on the scene. And they certainly didn't like the fact that he had supported Obama. But when, uh, you know, when it came to voting, uh, they voted for Gomez. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how much effect, practical effect that had. Right. There was radio right. uh, figures. So how, so how do we get people out to vote? I mean, what, what do we have to do? Light a fire under them? What do we do to get people to come out to vote? I think it's all about education. You know, I, I think a lot of people maybe well maybe maybe they don't forget but maybe they're just you know the younger the younger crowd really isn't aware of how important it really is mm -hmm. i i have lots of conversations with younger folks and they just say oh my vote doesn't make a difference i'm not coming out mm -hmm. and you know people really need to understand that their vote does make a difference every every vote counts and that's a it's a big deal mm -hmm. i mean so many countries can't vote you know, obviously that's changing as we as we go along in, in history, but it's I think it's one of those things that needs to be taught from an early age uh, that, you know, it's it's a right and a privilege that not a lot of people enjoy. Mm -hmm. And whether whether you think you're gonna make a difference or not, it's something that you should participate in because it, it's it's part of our it's part of our government, it's part of our constitution. Thank you. Guess what? Right now, we have our final thoughts from the right side. Believe it or not, we're up to that point already. So we each have one minute 
to talk about absolutely anything we'd like to talk about. Stephen, I'm going to start with you start tonight. With me. <clears throat> okay, well, my first thing, my final point, or whatever it is, is uh, the amnesty bill. All right, now we have to go out there and just hammer these guys, make the phone calls and all that stuff and get on them because what they're gonna pass is just gonna totally destroy this country. They're all gonna be able to vote and I've got the facts sheet here with me. Um, <clears throat> under S744, which is pretty much the amnesty bill, okay, they're gonna be allowed to, the misdemeanor offenses include a DUI, assault and battery and crimes, and domestic violence will be waived for them. Falsely representing or knowing social security uh, numbers obtained with false info waived. Uh, false, falsely claiming citizenship form on I-9 waived. Knowingly altering social security card waived. Documenting fraud and prove eligibility for employment waived. Willfully failure to pay taxes, file return, keep uh, required records and all that stuff. It, 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 it's, it's a disaster. Mm -hmm. So that's... Steven, My final I'll let you go next. Oh, well, um, I, I was I was actually sounding off on on the turnout of the vote, mm -hmm. and I it's really a thorn in my side. Uh, I don't care if you're a Democrat, Democrat or Republican or Independent. Every vote really counts, and when we have elections like we just had, which are you know quote unquote special elections. Never mind the general elections, and we have a 20% turnout. It's really, it's really pathetic. It yeah. really shows that people are disinterested and they're disconnected from from our constitutional government, yeah. from from the fact that we have the greatest the greatest government that has ever been created, and everybody has a say, but so many people just choose not to do it, mm -hmm. and it's 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 really a travesty. Mm -hmm. And I really hope that in the next election, people take that into consideration mm -hmm. and get out there and, and cast a vote. Mm -hmm. John? Uh, I'm gonna speak to something that just came out or was reaffirmed in the news today, and that is the uh, IRS auditor, uh, Treasury Department uh, auditor of the uh, IRS scandal, uh, took up the question whether or not a Democratic representative in the uh, hearings in the House suggested that uh, that uh, conservatives or Tea Party people were not the only ones targeted uh, in these, uh, in these uh, probing questions uh, by the IRS of officials that uh, progressives were also targeted, he claimed. Well, uh, this particular question was addressed today by the auditor, and I want to read his mm -hmm. response here. Uh, Mr. George, his name was George. Uh, says, while we have multiple sources of information corroborating the use of Tea Party and other related criteria we described in our report, uh, we have found no indication in any of these other materials that were supplied by the Democratic uh, representatives that progressives was a term used to refer cases to, for scrutiny. In other words, he, he uh, explicitly denies that uh, the focus was on progressives. And this came out also in terms of the number of targeted groups the IRS targeted 292 Tea Party groups, only six progressive groups. So it was overwhelmingly targeting of Tea Party people. I'm actually going to kind of bounce off you a little bit. And, you know, there's always that question, which one of the Obama scandals is worse? And I'm going to say it's an age thing. I think people my age, and I'm going to put retirees in that, I think we find Benghazi the worst of the, of the scandals. The reason is because we remember the days when we left no man on foreign soil. Indeed. Between the negligence and the incompetence of President Barack Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, four Americans died, somewhere in the vicinity of 60 were severely wounded and they were left on foreign soil. So I say Benghazi for my age. Working people who pay income tax and struggle to pay their, meet their bills every month understand very clearly how hard it is to make money and understand the terrifying nature of an IRS audit. For you people, I'm going to say the IRS hits home for you more. Then we've got the young group, the millennials, the new kids, the ones who live in 400 and 140 characters or less. Their cyber world is, how, is their social life, their political, their, their social life, their um, professional life, their educational life, their every, every piece is in this in this computer, and they always expected a sense of privacy, and now they know they don't have it. So that's my final thought. Now, as we close in tonight, I wanna thank all of you again. Stephen, 
John Stephen. Can from, I just interject one thing real quick? Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to make a difference on this amnesty thing, it's uh, to call us on uh, the White House switchboard, 202-224-3121. Perfect. Um, I just want to thank you again. I just want to clarify that as we close that there seems to be a recent explosion of comments about the responsibility that residents of Fitchburg bear uh, for residing within the city. We as Fitchburg Republican City Committee are engaged. We are responsible citizens. We're taxpayers and we know the, that our city has some crime, the loss of business and industries, general look of decay in our city, a main street that's gone. What do we feel that we're doing about it? Through the Fitchburg Republican City Committee and our outreach of education and support for candidacy, we are looking and encouraging smart, conservative individuals who want to run for public office to come to our monthly meetings. You will have, present your ideas, you will have a support system with us, and we want you to come and join us. Well, that's it for tonight. Again, thank you all. Uh, what I'd like to do is just remind you that you can find us on uh, YouTube uh, and search specifically for Fitchburg FRCC, no spaces. Uh, we are also on the radio station WPKZ once a month from the 7 to 8 time frame. And again, I just want to close by saying that we always stand for freedom. And we'll see you next month. Thank you very much for watching, and good night. Night. America, we stand for freedom. So let us all unite to yearn and strive for a republic that reflects our values that preserves our rights and goes forth in power and might that reflects our values and preserves <laughs> our rights and goes forth in power and might